Okay, thank God it's not that kind of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> If you smoke weed while listening to podcasts, then you're listening to High Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that necessarily true? Yeah, these are 100% true. I mean, if they're hearing my voice right now, definitely. Yeah. If you're listening to this <laughs> podcast, yeah, you're you're right at weed. this moment. You better be high. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening right now, you're listening to High Mystery. The podcast where comedians smoke weed and talk about the mysteries in our universe, and today is no different. Eee. I'm Robert. I'm Colin. I'm Tristan. I'm Ariana. And I'm Jason. Boom! That's right. That's our special guest, Jason Ellsworth. Thank you so much for having me, guys. We're Woo! glad to have you. He is a comedian, an actor, um, a director, a writer. I know a fraud at all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about confidence. Don't believe the hype. Fake it till you make it, right? Exactly, and I <laughs> fake it a lot. <laughs> I had the glorious pleasure of being directed by this great man sitting yes, beside me. That's true. I, I am here because I know Mr. Tristan as a, uh, a cast member in my movie, Bad CGI Sharks. And if you if you guys know Tristan from the podcast and you want to see him be chased by an invisible shark that wasn't there but is now a beautiful CGI shark, go check the movie out for his <laughs> awesome performance. Thank That's, you, Tristan, for your contribution. I saw it. It's pretty great. Yes. Thank you. I also saw it. I, I saw the entire movie not just Tristan's part and it was excellent oh thank I you laughed, so much I cried it was thoroughly enjoyable and I would like to state while we're on the topic that Mr. Tristan here did his scene in literally the last five minutes that we had the studio space rented I did not think we were going to get you in I thought we would have to cut it we had five minutes left we told him just do your thing and he ran around like a psychotic Looney Tunes character on crack reacting to a shark that wasn't even there and in post the scene actually worked Bless his heart. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I held a quick seance and I called upon Charlie Chaplin and all yes. the... I noticed it in the in the footage. We edited it out. Ali edited out the the Chaplin ghost, but he was he was there. Yes, yeah. marinating me like <laughs> yeah, like Mar marinating, yeah. Pump, yeah, pumping you. Yes, I thought it looked a little. I recognized that handiwork. That's why they call him One Take Tristan. That's one right. Take Tristan. <laughs> He only does one take. After that, he throws a fit. Yeah, that was the thing. We knew we only had one, and he would start to diva out. So. <laughs> Uh, so today we are actually streaming live on Twitch. We're back on Twitch. That's right. Mondays at 2. You can watch 2 30. Yep. 2 30 is time. 2 30. Uh, yeah. Like Stoner that. time. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe 3, maybe closer to 3 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Depending where you are, it might be yeah. right at 4 20. Yeah. You know? Oh. Yeah. It's a uh, 2 20 ish California time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so it's 4 20 somewhere. That's right. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it is. Unless, of course, it's like directly on the hour and then you can't really make that argument. No, it's in your heart calling. It's 4 20 <laughs> all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's matters of the heart I'm speaking of. <laughs> so, yeah, we're trying something a little new with this uh, right now. We're still working out some kinks. So, hopefully, some more. Uh, some better produced videos will be coming to like YouTube and whatnot later on. It'll be less kinky and more kinky at the same time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Different kind of kinky. Simultaneously kinky and none. <laughs> So uh, we're this, definitely gonna smoke weed. We right? are. Yeah, I hope. sure fucking hope so. That's why I showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a stober podcast. Stober. <laughs> yeah. Speak already. St I'm too stober. <laughs> so uh, I packed a blunt in a hydro lemonade high hemp wrap. Hydro Ooh. lemonade sounds like a Pokemon move. Hit him with the hydro <laughs> lemonade, Squirtle Beam. Squirtle. <laughs> Squirtle. It is, all. <laughs> it is packed with uh, NoHo Supreme, which is the, uh, you got the, the Supreme of the finest. The, high, the higher I, tier shelf. I had oh. no idea that I was paying more money for this thing until I was checking out. Like, <laughs> Let me ask you, you, you well, guys I've are all experienced exactly. potheads. Like, do you notice the different? Because, yes. like, they're like, what do you want? You want a hybrid? I, like, I don't care. It's all weed. Just give me something. No, I don't no, notice no. the differences. No, we are like, not like that. Yes. Like, <laughs> like, I need a sativa because, like, what the fuck? you talking about i noticed no difference weed is weed just get me fucking stoned i don't care put it in the bag let me get out of here to speak to some of that i think part of the reason you think weed is weed is because dispensaries have been doing us wrong for so long so a lot of times what you get labeled as a sativa or an indica or a hybrid is not in fact that indica sativa so, or hybrid so you think you can notice the difference like oh, more of a body versus head versus thousand percent really certain 
Because yes. see, I've never been able to. It all just becomes weed to me, and I, you know, it all has the same effect. And I can tell when it's shitty weed now because we're spoiled out here in Cali. But sure. I don't know. I've never been like, oh, this one's more of like a body. This one's a head. So if no, you if again. you get in a place where you're like, I'm only smoking sativa for for me, it's been every day for however long. And then you have a roommate like Rob who insists on big old fucking indicas that are deep in dank and make you go to sleep Heavy. for two I was going to say, that was, that was my thing. I'm so, after all this time of being a pot, I'm still confused. So sativa is supposed to be up mm-hmm. and yeah, indica like is the relax? Yeah. See, I, st- I still don't know. I guess it's just like, like if you what, want to go to this? bed, it's indica. This is sativa. This is indica. This, this is indica, indica, so we're going to fall asleep. Yeah. Novo Supreme is definitely an indica. We lit Rob's blunt. We did. Um, we got a little sidetracked because I also have a blunt. Sweet. Uh, the Twisted Hemp Wrap. <laughs> Blue Banana. This Ooh. Is flavor. And so then, we got lemon and we got banana. Yes. yes. And then the <laughs> the weed in there is Jack Herrera. Oh, classic. So I will battle your that's indica with my here. pure sativa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for keeping me up to date. Uh, today, um, well, whoa, actually, whoa. Yeah, yeah, sorry. sorry. Whoa. <laughs> no, 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 I've got a checklist in my mind. Okay. So uh, okay. we ask all of our guests uh, what their first time smoking weed, how they got introduced to weed was. Oh, man. Oh, man, as, as I pass it, hold on, yes. let me just... <laughs> We're all kind of hoping that they say, this is my first time smoking. <laughs> yeah, drink that sweet nectar, Jason, and this is This is my first time. It has yet to happen, but we yeah, should right? try to get somebody who has never smoked weed before. No, I think it'd be hilarious if you yeah. invite sober people on to get canatonic with fear and then ask them about the paranormal shit. You know, that's, <laughs> that's a podcast that I want to hear. The big problem with that strategy is, does anyone in this room know anyone who's never smoked weed before? It's California, no. <laughs> it would be a stretch. It would I mean, be quite a stretch. Stretch. We did have one guest, Lori, who uh, like had only smoked weed about like three a or four times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's pretty close. Pretty right? close. Yeah. To, to throw him in the deep end of our project. <laughs> oh yeah, it's still the deep end for sure. I feel it already. Right. I was gonna say I know people who are taking breaks. You know, <laughs> we've all taken the yeah. breaks. Yeah. <laughs> It's always funny when, like, you skip a night of smoking weed, and you're like, damn, man, I want to smoke a blunt tonight. What's it been, like, five months? Like, no, we skipped one day, you fucking potted. Oh, yeah. just felt yeah. like an eternity. I don't even know what that's like. I know. I haven't yeah. skipped a day. It's scary to think about. I don't even know how long. <laughs> so, yeah, your first. It's okay, so yeah. the first time. I had, uh, I grew up with, like, a little trinity of friends that we all lived next to each other, and I was friends with them since I was before conscious because our moms knew each other. They got into smoking weed before I did. So one day, and the funny thing, I'm going to try to be as, as verbatim with the quotes. They're like, wow, Jay, you're a really funny guy. We were wondering, how funny would you be if you smoked weed? So I swear that was the thing. Uh, and they, they changed my life forever, by the way, because obviously I haven't stopped since. And this is, I think this was the summer before the senior year of high school. So I was a late bloomer because I hear people say this started at 14, 15. You're supposed to wait till at least 18 so the brain can develop. Oh That's what I did. Damn. That's what I did. Well, I mean, you're insinuating that my brain isn't developed. <laughs> Your brain's <laughs> fucked up, boy. Uh, so I, it was a senior year before high school. They took us out to a spot in the woods. And again, verbatim quotes, I remember saying the hilariously cliche, so am I supposed to, like, inhale this? Or, you fucking moron. <laughs> I don't know. I think I might have had the the experience where your first time you're not really sure if, like, is this happening to me? But the one thing that makes this somewhat of an anecdote and somewhat worth telling is we went to White Castle. Nice. Oh, my God, I miss my White Castle because we grew up on the East. Why the fuck don't they have it out here? You had your movie. And it's you... disgusting. Okay, that's actually, that's actually a valid point because they opened up they opened up the first West Coast White Castle ever in the Las Vegas Strip a couple years ago. I said, let's take a birthday trip specifically for that. And when my friends were asking me about it, I was like, you know what? If you weren't bred to love this stuff and grow up in New Jersey being stoned at 2 in the morning, it probably just could. Like, fucking Carl's Jr. had some star. I'm sleeping on this one here. I mean, just to give a lending to your White Castle, because I grew up in Kentucky where we have White Castle, it's one of the only places you can get cheese sticks, and you can get them at 3 in the morning. That's true. You're, you're pretty much supposed to be there at 2 in the morning. Yeah. But, like, when Carl's Jr. had their little sliders a couple months back, and they were just, like, the White Castle burger, but on steroids and with a juicy charm, like... What am I going to do? It doesn't hand up. It's a little paper thin. <laughs> it tastes like, it, but, you know, you grew up on it. Where was I going with this? Okay, so White first Castle. Night we, you smoked, right, you we went, went to White, to White Castle. Castle the first time I ever smoked, and I got the fucking order number, and it was 420 yeah. on the receipt. Yes. And here's the thing. I didn't fucking save it. Can you imagine oh. having that as a little fucking stoner souvenir? Yeah, but I do okay. remember it. And, you know, other than that, I feel like it was uneventful because I didn't really get into... 
uh, the actual high of it the next couple times. But I just think it's funny that my friends just kind of offhandedly and also of note, one of these friends, although he does smoke, kind of moved on from it and he'll do it once in a while. But the other two of us like stayed as like a religion, like a relationship. <laughs> but I just think it's funny. Like, yeah, Jason, you might be funny stoned. Now let's influence irreversibly the next 20 years of your life, giving you the thing that you will become known for, the cliche yeah. that you will become that will alter everything. The origin story. Yes. Yeah. If it hadn't been them, it would have been somebody else. It would have been somebody else. Yeah. No, that's the thing is it felt like, uh, it felt like, you know, when you discover a band and you just instantly feel like I've always been a fan of these people, but I just <laughs> discovered them now, it just synced up with with me and the weed. It's just kind of like a talking conversation. I was saying to you, I feel like there's very few people who I love alcohol and weed equally. Usually maybe you indulge in both, but you have your favorite and it just, alcohol will never beat weed. It just, and that's why I hate going to bars. I don't dislike alcohol, but it's like, if you tell me let's go home and smoke and blast rap exactly. music, I'm so much happier. Oh my God, and weed and music. Can we talk about blunts and rap music? <laughs> I threw away my college career because I discovered weed and rap music, the combination of both. I swear, I kid you not. That was my whole life was in a car, shotgun, blunts, rap, fuck school. That's for another podcast. <laughs> we got to talk about the paranormal. <laughs> That's true. I'm sorry. I got sidetracked here. You got me on my favorite topic. You've been listening to the podcast, Blunts and Rap. <laughs> I, would, I would dig that podcast. Yeah, you can rob with Bob Bob it. it. I was thinking weed religion. That was, that, that was <laughs> actually a, a, my pitch for the next one. Yes, Blunts and Rap is the next one coming up from this. <laughs> Welcome to another day of weed and religion. <laughs> Yay, it is good. <laughs> Today we celebrate the Church of Sativa and yes. its many Mennonites. <laughs> it's funny that we mention weed and religion. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, funny. Segway. Yes, funny. Ha -ha. Laugh out loud. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll expect all of you to guffaw real loud. <laughs> because today I brought in the mystery, and it is the fourth and final part of Oak Island. We did it. <gasps> yeah. Yay. We just get a little applause for that transition there. Oh, I'll applaud even though I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I'll applaud. It's Oak Island. It's an island with Oak. Yes. Give us a lot of recap, Rob. Jason needs a recap. Oak Island. It's a thing. It's a thing Oak about Island. stuff. Oak Island. It's a thing about stuff. <laughs> Was that Tiffany's song? Tiffany always gave us that amazing song that I could never remember. Uh, well, we've talked about the history of Oak Island. That was part one. Part two was pirate treasure. That was a theory. Yeah, Black oh, I missed the treasure. Or, uh, or Captain Kidd. And part three was about uh, <laughs> the secret authorship of William Shakespeare's <laughs> plays and that Francis Bacon might have buried his those, stuff down there, those things down there. And are you generally like aware of what Oak Island is in general? I am not good, sir. Okay, Oak Island is an island off of Canada, right? Yes. In North, North America. Yeah. And uh, it uh, has a well, essentially, that has... <sighs> it's, it's got several pits on it because people think that there is buried treasure on this island. Supposedly, They've been digging it for over 200 years. Yeah, yes. supposedly there have been things that have been uncovered and unearthed that have stated that there's treasure buried there. There's yes. also like folklore and legend that treasure is buried there. Um, so Why are we not there right now? There are. Why are there we are. doing this podcast? We could be treasure hunting. We could actually be treasure hunting. Someone has beaten us to yes. that already. They Rick have. and Marty Lagina. Yes. Yes. Maybe there's more treasure. Jason, if you really want to be a modern day treasure hunter, I mean, people are pulling wreckage out of the Caribbean all the time. That's true. You know? That's true. I'm probably just slacking as you <laughs> Go to the beach with your metal detector. Plenty of opportunities for a modern day treasure hunter out there. Side note. My sister and her boyfriend are obsessed with this Oak Island treasure history <laughs> thing, and Tristan also likes it, so we found this out around Christmas time, so Tristan decided that they needed a metal detector for Christmas. So we went and bought Probably them a metal detector for Christmas <laughs> so they can go treasure hunting. I mean, I was told that I won Christmas by getting yes. it. <laughs> Objectively, you did. So what's the deal with religion on Oak Island? So today we will be talking about the Knights Templar and Ooh. the theory that they came to the New World. Who are the Knights Templar, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked, Colin. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> the Knights Templar were a Catholic military order founded in 1119 okay. and recognized by Pope Innocent II in 
1,130. You don't oh, protest too much. Did you say Pope Innocent? Yes. yes. His <laughs> name is Pope Innocent? Oh, yeah, he's definitely fucking kids. <laughs> Seriously, come on. <laughs> My name is Pope Not Raping Boy Anus. <laughs> you don't protest. <laughs> yeah, yes. Pope Innocent. Woof. Pope Scout's fun. Honor. What kind of blood orgies are happening in that? It's area. like fucking James Cameron naming the shit Unobtainium and Avatar. Like, dude, two on the nose. Come on. Yes. So Pope Pinky Swear uh, <laughs> in 1139 recognized the Knights Templar and they were active until 1312 when it was suppressed by Pope Clement V. Basically religious knights, you know, knights for the church. Yes. Okay. And that is Pope. <laughs> That's Pope Innocent? Pope yeah. Innocent. Uh, <laughs> the Templar were among the most skilled fighting units in the Crusades. Oh, God. Right. Okay. Well, too. So, we are on to Blunt too. Jason is saying, oh, God, about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was actually just about to say, I'm actually pretty nicely stoned right in there. Here it comes. Strap it's, in, and it's baby. beautifully rolled for those of you who aren't watching the visual. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 90% of the Templar were non-combative and managed the church's large economic infrastructure. They developed innovative financial techniques that became an early form of banking, oh. forming the world's first multinational corporation. The world's first Wells Fargo. Yes. So basically, these are just a lot of bankers who figured out a really cool name for themselves. <laughs> well, more like a bunch of religious bastards who were like, you know, we're getting all this money, but we could get more money. <laughs> <laughs> what religion is about. Yes. In 1312, rumors surrounded the Templars' secret initiation ceremonies created distrust in the organization, and King Philip IV of France, whom at the time was deeply in debt to the order, took advantage of this distrust to destroy them and erased his debt. Okay. Ah. Break that down for someone who's really stoned. Did you <laughs> say the first <laughs> order? <laughs> the Knights of Wren? Is that what we're talking about? Basically, King Philip IV of France, uh, he was deeply indebted to the Knights Templar. And so there was already this weird um, uh, rumors surrounding their initiation into the Templar, you know, basically like... Oh. Yeah, they were picking up a cherry with their butt cheeks yeah, exactly, and walking across kind of the room. <laughs> oh, you've done this before. <laughs> I he am a Knights, Knights Templar. Templar. Yes, yes, yes. And so <laughs> and he was like, you know what? I could, you know, pay these guys or I can just say, these guys are crazy. They need to be stopped. And so mm. that's what he did. He tried to get everybody Got to, it. you know, go that's against the That's what they the did Knights to Templar. Jesus. <laughs> so <It's>, so <laughs> what I know about the Knights Templar is that they're known for, like, taking other religious artifacts and, like, destroying them and trying mm -hmm. to just, like, uh, promote the word of, of Christ and Jesus while also like destroying all evidence that says otherwise. See, now they could be destroying it or they could be taking it and keeping it for themselves. Hoarding it. Yes. Hoarding it. Yes. Of course, that may be later iterations of the Knights Templar. We're talking yeah. about the first. The first or. First, yeah. Like the, these are the guys who figured out the name, started modern day banking as we know it. Got a king in debt to him for the first time. <laughs> I yeah. mean, granted, this is towards the end of their 200-year run. But but they're going to have, like, only resurgences, for right? Because don't they become, like, the Rosicrucians at one point? Well, or? see, yeah, there are many factions. Oh, we'll get into it. Okay. Rosicrucians? <laughs> <laughs> that rolls off the tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Rosicrucians were, like, they did a lot of eye makeup and, like, a lot of gel in their hair. They were really intense. <laughs> They listen to a lot of like dark music, those kind of guys. <laughs> you that know, side of the island's like really emo, bro. <laughs> yeah, we just feel more. <laughs> On Friday, October thirteenth, thirteen oh seven, Philip had hundreds, approximately six hundred Templars arrested, tortured, and burned at the stake spurring the origin of the Friday the 13th superstition. Oh, oh. Yes, and it was. No that was crazy. And I am Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, just ash with my finger. <laughs> yeah, then he went to grab it's it. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's too eager, you know. Do not touch the hot end. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So Pope Clement V disbanded the order in 1312 under pressure from King Philip IV. This oh. led many of the Templar to go underground and operate in secret. Many other Templars would go on to form many smaller factions within the same sect, though nearly 3,000 Templars were left unaccounted for. Oh, uh, became a secret order of Templars. Mm. This week on Secret Templars. <laughs> <laughs> Who can spot the Templar? <laughs> um, your intro did not lead to a game show, but for some reason it was a game show right, for me. Right. Like, your intro was stupid. We've got five Templars hidden all over this studio. The person who gets them right will win a new grandfather clock. And a free blue t-shirt. <laughs> As always, I'm on the DJ booth. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the history books uh, end with the Knights Templar. But if you thumb through the pages of what might have happened in history books, there is a theory that some of the Templars, in an effort to escape persecution, fled across the Atlantic to the New World nearly a hundred years before Columbus. Ah. Ooh, <laughs> Columbus was a fraud. I mean, we know Columbus wasn't the first one there, right? Yeah. Vikings made it their way before Columbus. And didn't you say did that, anyway. like, Kevin Bacon, not Kevin Bacon, Francis, Francis Bacon. No, no, Kevin Bacon, <laughs> you're yeah, right the first Bacon. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. seven degrees separation. Yes. Tremors. Yes. He, he is a vampire. Of <laughs> all time. Uh, no, Francis Bacon, doesn't he have, like, connections to the Templars in some way as well? Yes, he, he was the one that, uh, like, Founded or was the leader of the Rosicrucians. Uh -huh. So the subsect. The subsect. The subsect. The subsect. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the subsect. <laughs> so let me transport you back to the not so fictionalized 1307. Yes. 1307. <laughs> King Philip's men storm the Templars' heavily fortified headquarters in Paris in order to put them on trial for heresy, idolatry, sodomy, and corruption. But when his men arrive, they found no treasure at the compound, and the knights had all fled. Mm. And there was no more sodomy to be had. <laughs> <laughs> sodomy died that day. <laughs> if only. <laughs> it is believed they fled to La Rochelle, a port in the southwest of France where they kept a large fleet. Yeah, I think they make wine. Yes. A good red. <laughs> <laughs> they manned a number of ships and set sail, uh, staying close to the coastline, and made their way north, eventually reaching Scotland, where they helped Robert the Bruce defeat the English army in the Battle of Bonnockburn in 1314. Just as, like, mercenaries, or... They, they just, just helped him out. They, I mean, they were one of the best fighting forces of the Crusades, so, you know, they they helped a buddy out. Yeah, Dude. but they've been presumably in exile for several centuries, right? No, no, no. This is, uh... This is right when they... Right after they... Like, panicked. 1312 happened. Okay. And this is thirteen. Just a couple years later. Yeah. Sorry. So I there's 3,000 of these guys still un <laughs> unaccounted for, and, uh... It's possible that they all stayed together, moved up north to help this guy defeat um, yeah, they're all sitting the around. English Army. They're all sitting around just looking at each other with their expert warrior skills. Like, what should we do? And the other guy's like, war? He's like, <laughs> works for me. Yeah, I, I'm good with war. You guys want to do war? <laughs> we should find one. <laughs> You're a thinker, Bill. <laughs> do they have a motherland? Like, are the nice Templar... Do they have an origin, or are they like a conglomerate of a bunch of different like they're places? Coming, they're coming from Vatican City, presumably, which is its own entity. It doesn't sure. belong to Rome or it, or England or anything like that. So no. for them to like fight the English, it's not like they're fighting their own people or whatever. No, definitely they, not. They fight under the Pope. So. Exactly. So um, and Scotland and Ireland traditionally Catholic places for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but all the, all that we know is that they're no fan of France because of... They tried to yeah. dismantle them. Yeah. Uh, sometime afterward, the Templars set sail with Henry Sinclair. Henry Sinclair was a Scottish and Norwegian nobleman whom had reportedly took part in explorations to Greenland. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's how he got. That's how they got to the New World is because Henry Sinclair was at this battle, and he was a nobleman who went to Greenland, and we all know Vikings went to Greenland and then to Nova Scotia and what have you. Yes, history. History. <laughs> history, indeed, yes. So we all know that these things We all happened. know, yes. <laughs> I definitely knew all of that. Yes, <laughs> but <clears throat> the only thing that's up for debate and question is whether or not the Knights Templar were aboard these ships. And we've got a bunch of master debaters here ready to debate it. <laughs> Misty debatish. <laughs> I mean, it's plausible either way, right? Because... At this point, we have no way of tracking these guys. Yeah, There's we still don't know what happened to them. Yeah. We know that they're on the run. It's and all we here. We know that then. they're a well organized okay. fighting force. And it'll always be more magical in our minds, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know that they were protecting large treasures uh, of the Catholic Church. So the idea is that these 3,000 guys, either some or all of them, went and dug up the hole for. Well,. Well, supposedly they have like the Arctic Covenant with them and a bunch of other <clears throat> oh, like sure, sure, important sure. Uh, artifacts. That thing from Indiana Jones. That's the yes. one. Yes. The one that melted Nazis. You remember. <laughs> Melt your face off. So there is support for this theory that they did travel to America long before Columbus. Um, a theory can be found in carvings at Rosalind Chapel in Scotland. Rosalind Chapel was completed by Henry Sinclair's grandson in 1486. And that is Rosalind Chapel. Uh, so wait, if they got there before Columbus, <laughs> shouldn't we abolish Columbus Day and have a holiday off of school named after these guys? I mean, I'm all for that. You know, it's <laughs> well, the government. <laughs> and to be clear, we've replaced Columbus Day anyway, yeah, right? It's Indigenous, Indigenous People's Day yeah. now. So. Oh, it's official? Yeah, so fuck Columbus! Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the but we, and most, we still get the day off, though, right? Yeah, okay. I think so. <laughs> I hope so. It's the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he completed this six years before Columbus ever set sail. Uh, and oh. the carvings are of corn husks and other American plants... <gasps> Things that they didn't have in Europe. They did not have those. And yet they're carving them on the wall, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry, can you, for, for the people watching this, you should do that. I don't think you've done your face thing yet. I love how, like, <laughs> up in your grill it is. It's like right up there. Do it. Uh, it's right, like, yeah. you know, when you watch those YouTube videos of people playing video games, it's very much yeah. Yeah. <laughs> live and direct and personal. <laughs> I mean, definitely when I'm not, you know, triple tasked or anything i'll probably be much happier when it's one of your mysteries sure um but oh you guys all bring one to the table like on a round table like okay then it's your, you bring one and you yeah bring one, you bring one. yeah that's fun yes yeah. yeah, for sure we thought about making rob do it all the time but... <laughs> and just to be clear we are open to guests coming yeah. back yeah. with a mystery oh, I, I want i want to bring matthew here oh, yeah. I I matthew. two mysteries no maybe just one i don't remember you did fairies Dancing no, you did fairies. Oh, and I, I did, missed did the fairies. fairies. Ariana did two. <laughs> Ariana nice. definitely did. I did aliens. Um, no, I was about to ask if you guys have done all the big cliches, the Loch Ness is the aliens, no, the big foot. No, actually, no. No? We, we do talk, they talk Loch Ness? about them Loch Ness? a lot. Like, We've they talked, reference we, them. But we did talk about Loch Ness because we talked about all the Ness. The thing about right? Loch Ness is you have a definitive axe to the story because the guy confessed on the deathbed, so that's kind of a, not a mysterious. What you'll find is that that, story that you just said is common across almost all cryptids there's a guy who claimed that he was responsible for the chupacabra there's a guy who claimed he was responsible for bigfoot there's a guy who claimed okay. he was responsible right for everyone's gonna try to get some kind of fame or something on their deathbed well the, the most famous one i know of is the bigfoot guy who claimed that he was the one who is he and he literally had molds of giant feet that he was like i went out there and pressed this into the dirt I guess you'd have to track it back to uh, if they had records of who sold it to the original newspaper. Otherwise, sure. how, how the fuck would you verify you're right? Yeah. How would you know that some guy wasn't just like, that was me! <laughs> I did nothing with my life! I want to claim that about. It's kind of its own mystery all in of itself. It's like, do you believe these guys who have claimed that they are what they are or whatever? Uh, I have another little thing for us to smoke. Oh this my is... god, I'm so stoned. <laughs> we got to do yeah. another episode Excellent. after this, Jason. All right, I got yeah, I to force myself to the tour. Uh, March onward. Lance actually left this for us. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob's buddy from up north uh, who nice. worked in the dispensary. Uh, it's a cure pod, and uh, I think he said it was a 
hybrid inside and you just literally pop the little pod in the top and just breathe. You don't have to press any buttons or just anything. Just breathe. You do yep. have to hold the carb though. Oh, there's, there's a, carb. a carb? Oh, I is that the one we smoked on the podcast? Yeah, because on the if podcast that's the... now. <laughs> Whoa. Conception. Whoa. Yeah, because Oh, okay. <coughs> we have we did have a problem with one of the vapes. <coughs> we we passed it around like Three times, Call ladies and gentlemen. For us. I see there no is hole. no car. Yes. Right? I see he no hole. Sacrificed for us. There's so no car. Know how to do it. Right I see no hole. <laughs> you don't Thank need you for your sacrifice. No <laughs> you don't need to drag it to hell like I just did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to drag it to hell. Okay, cool. <laughs> so there are also letters and stories depicting white visitors to the New World. Many people believe these to be of Sinclair though validity of these letters and stories have been greatly contested. Well, I mean, it also could just be Vikings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We do There's know... There's a lot of them quiet thrown around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's unknown when or where Sinclair died, and there is no surviving documentation that Sinclair ever made voyage out of Europe or that he ever returned from this voyage. <laughs> Lastly, Nova Scotia means New Scotland, which could have been attributed to Henry Sinclair. Uh-huh. <laughs> How about that? I mean, but also, don't they say Nova Scotia is because the last place that Vikings knew was Scotland? So when they got to the next piece of land, they called it New Scotland? <clears throat> I mean, that or Sinclair. <laughs> I don't know about any of that. You guys are clearly studied well on this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I'm learning every by minute by minute. <laughs> I mean, all I stuff just, to forget. In a right? <laughs> what are we talking about? All you got to do is watch one se- season or two of Vikings, and yeah. <laughs> you'll be caught up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, further evidence to support Templar inv- involvement in the money pit would be the need for highly skilled workers to construct the pit, along with its booby traps. Well, I will say that according to Oak Island, the TV show, <laughs> oh. uh, they did they have found a lot of evidence to support um, that time period, like the 1600s, and um, as well as like finding like a little like cross trinket, which yeah. implies like Templar or some kind yeah. of like religious faction. So yeah, they did find a like a looped cross pendant. Uh, that dates back to the before Columbus. But it, I thought they found a big old cross in there. Is no. that what I'm thinking of? The cross, the, the, the cross you might be thinking of is <laughs> Nolan's cross. You woke up. Tristan's dying. I'm sorry, it was just funny also because as you were doing it, it was like whistling like... <laughs> <laughs> The testament to these mics that they pick up that these are whistle. real they hit hard and yeah. they taste good i agree <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> thank you lance for the cure pod yes yes Shout hey. out to lance. thanks yeah, you're thinking of nolan's cross which is like stone markers that on the island make a giant cross yeah. or they if you encounter like some of the smaller stone markers it makes the tree of life the tree of life yeah. um but this is like a little, like what you would imagine someone to wear around their neck. Yes. Like okay. it's a little cross with like a hole in the top that you would imagine someone. Cocaine goes in. Exactly. <laughs> there's, all, there's all kinds. Like goes in uh, Sarah Michelle Gillar and Cruel Intentions, right? Exactly. Yeah. There's all kinds of religious stuff associated with this, basically. Yeah. Uh, nice so Templar. The uh, what? <laughs> but is their god the right god? <laughs> We've been looking. Did we find him? Did we find the right one? Don't worry, guys. This time is the one. So the idea is that you would need Freemasons uh, <coughs> to be the only people capable at this time uh, able to engineer such an elaborate pit. I mean, it is okay. pretty elaborate. Again, kudos to the show. I'm clearly watching it and a fan. <laughs> uh the the tunnels they're finding are incredibly deep, and mm-hmm. they are very so- sophistic, sophisticatedly made. They have like water tunnels, trap tunnels, flood tunnels. They have like 
uh, is it kind of like the underground uh, system that Bane was constructing in The Dark Knight Rises when he had the workers tunneling underneath Gotham City? Similar? Sim similar. Sim similar concepts. Similar. I think that's actually what inspired Christopher Nolan for that one. <laughs> yes. Dig your tunnels. <laughs> we shall get on the Gotham. I haven't done that voice in a long time. I'm, so, I'm sorry, you said the pit, and suddenly I was in that goddamn pit scene from Rises. Right. I was just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, if the Templars did flee to Nova Scotia, it is believed that they would have constructed the pit in order to safeguard the massive amount of religious treasure, as the Templars were the world's first international bank and protectors of the church's artifacts. There is reason to believe that they, uh, ha that they have everything from the Ark of the Covenant to the Gold Menorah, or even the Holy Grail uh, could be buried on Oak Island. Hmm. That's just a refresher in the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> <laughs> now go back to your face, right? <laughs> more face! Hey, by far my more face. face. I don't want to hear the facts. I want to see your face. Serve that face, queen. I uh, loved it, especially because he like knew it was on his face, so you could tell he was getting like more and more red. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wasn't. In the goodness. He's fine. He's fine. Okay. Yeah, there Good see, job. look at that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I would click it, but I'd be afraid that I'd click one thing and your whole laptop <laughs> like self would just <laughs> literally shoot off like a rocket into the ceiling where it would then <laughs> explode. And I would just be sitting here like, sorry, <laughs> I wanted to see your face. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know what that button did. I like this theory the most for like Oak Island as a whole because it makes a lot more sense to me why a group who has like a lineage and there will be more Knights Templar down the road, presumably, if we believe in things like the Illuminati and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so like it makes more sense that they would stash something for their organization to then build, like dig up later if need be. Which kind of makes me think like if it is the Illuminati and stuff, don't you think they would have like gone and retrieved it already? Like, they've, had, they've had more success than their wildest dreams. So they're so like, they're, whatever, we yeah. don't need that. Uh, they, they got bored. That the yeah. Knights Templar are now the Illuminati? Maybe. Ooh. Well, they definitely, you were talking about the uh, the Freemasons, and yes. people do believe like Freemasons, the, the Freemasons is a part of the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. uh, Illuminati. Okay. Um, I vaguely know about like that. There's certainly both secret organizations. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, it just makes sense that an organization over an individual would bury treasure to go retrieve it later. I also feel like in today's society, whenever we think of like a hidden organization, we just think like we tag it under the the guise of Illuminati. Like yeah. whether it's the Freemasons who control everything or the banks. The or shadow government. Big shadow government. Yeah, like Lizard we all just are like, well, it's Girl Illuminati. Scouts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Girl Scouts. <laughs> they are the most dangerous. They're scary, man. They're the reason America is the number one obese country. It's due to those damn cookies. Oh, dude, they set up outside the shop and they stare you down. They don't care because they're kids, so they just keep asking. They invade the personal <laughs> space, you know? And it works. No they, sense of personal boundaries. I'm They've like, really yes. figured out child labor. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> some yes, some type of loophole. <laughs> we'll put it right in front of their face. They won't even notice. <laughs> just put them in skirts. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, last I will say on this is that the last evidence to support Knights Templar involvement in the New World can be found in the local Mi'kmaq people who have Mi'kmaq. tales Mi'kmaq. of <laughs> white men coming to the island and their flag is an exact duplicate of the Knights Templar flag. Wait, Interesting. the Mi'kmaq are real people? Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. From the Mi North the Mi'kmaq? America? That's what Mi'kmaq. it is? Yeah, Mi'kmaq. Mi Liquid From hot North magma. America? From, yeah. The, okay, it's like a Iroquois or something yeah. like that. Okay. Mi'kmaq. Yeah. Never heard that before. What a tiny little sect of humanity that must be. Yeah. Okay, the Mi'kmaq. Mi'kmaq. The Mi'kmaq. <laughs> the Mi'kmaq. Yeah, and there, I mean, it's got to be a strange coincidence to have the exact same flag. <laughs> well, yeah, so, I mean... Flag. I, I would say that if even if they didn't make Doak Island, like they definitely went up and helped out Homie, and so like, <laughs> yeah, they they got they definitely got at least to like what they got was Greenland, Scotland? Greenland, yeah, so, they got yeah. to Greenland with Homie Robert the Bruce, yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 So, so, and that's Robert the Bruce or Dub Bruce. The <laughs> Bruce, the Bruce, the Bruce, the no, Bruce, because that's a fantastic <laughs> name, Robert the Bruce, yeah, the Bruce. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so I, I was going to do this mystery when Lance was here, but you were not here, and I really wanted to end it while you were here, because you're the one keeping up with the show. I've seen yeah. maybe the first three or so episodes of the Man, new season. They are always on the cusp of finding something, right? <laughs> of course. I, am, I will say this, guys. I've seen enough nails. You don't need to keep showing yeah. me that you found nails. No more nails. <laughs> I get it. Things were built there in the 1600s, whether it was a, a loading dock or whatever. Wait, what? so there's a docu-series all about exactly oh, yes. what he's talking yes. about. And it's what like channel? seventh uh, season. Discovery Channel. Oh. No, History, History Channel. History. Oh, because yeah, I've never heard about this before today. It's called The Curse of Oak Island. Yeah. Wait, Wait, and according, Oak Island. According to them. History, you know? Should I look it up? Uh, yeah. Well, I will say, according to them, there's also <laughs> a legend that seven people are going to have to die before yeah. they can find the treasure. I and, couldn't uh, I couldn't find any legit information on where that came anytime from. Anytime you see it, it has to do with that show. Like, yeah, it's only with that show that they, I mean, maybe some guy told a producer, it's like, yeah, theory is. <laughs> and then they're like, this is the widespread theory. Well, they're something. up to six. People. It's History it's, Channel. It's, it's History, history Channel. Yeah, yeah. They're up to six people. Okay. One They've, more person. Yeah. Do us a favor. Go sacrifice yourself. <laughs> oh, God. Don't, 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 don't give I'm that joking. advice. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Give one for the team. But yeah, I was wondering if they found anything. Uh, did they wrap this season up? Uh, they're about to wrap it up right now there was like a hurricane that came in and like kind of like backtracked them they had like drained the whole uh swamp area and were like excavating it which i'm pretty excited about but they did something that i didn't understand they started excavating like the stone path instead of going to like the money shot which is like the (laughs) eye of the the swamp like a circular thing and like there was a bunch of other evidence that pointed to the eyes where it's at man go to the eye they're like We'll get there. But first, we're going <laughs> to excavate this stone walkway. And then the they wasted all that time doing that. And then the hurricane came in and, like, reflooded the entire swamp. So it's like, <laughs> why did you not just go to the, you know, yeah. the money shop where you it's think everything thing. is supposed to be? Because you know, it was beeping. It was like there was. they said there was definitely something down there on the metal detectors, right? I mean, I like to say nobody plans for a hurricane. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she does say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm known for saying that. And Basically, you would, my sitcom catchphrase. You would be accurate in this. <laughs> There's just like pancake batter all over the kitchen. Nobody plans for a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> Give him six more seasons. Please, seriously, if you want to hire a funny fat guy. <laughs> Back to promoting that great show that I watch. <laughs> uh, they are very close to finding at least the original location of the money pit, which is like supposedly Uh, like the money pit is what they call like. Sounds like a classy Vegas casino. Right. (laughs) I mean. Welcome to the money pit. No, Technically it's it's where everyone has dumped their money. (laughs) Yeah. And lost a lot of money as well. Like so many people have spent so much money trying to like excavate this tunnel and lost so much money. It's like definitely a double entendre. I definitely remember hearing about this money pit way back uh like 2006 um uh, the stuff they don't want you to know Mm. uh did an episode on the money pit and i was like oh that's amazing and then they came out with this show and i was like i'm gonna watch every episode (laughs) (laughs) and then i did it for you yeah yeah no i mean i've got i've got most of them but yeah i can't wait for that new season to come out on hulu or whatever it is yeah, so this mystery is ongoing. Let it us is. know what you think if you've got a comment for sure. Sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are so many other theories. Yeah, I want to hear the most out otherworldly shit you Well, you got to do a part five then. Or no, part, no, 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 no. You got to do is, another no, You got <laughs> to do, yeah. do one He's last wrapping one. wrapping it up. Just Wait, <laughs> this is part four. This is part yeah. four. Yeah. So what were the first three? Uh, the, the, history, the history. The history. Pirates. And uh, William Shakespeare. Oh, Francis right, Bacon. Right, Francis right, right, right. Yeah. Kevin Bacon. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Trimmers. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, there, I, I don't know if Tristan has any more, because they do go into a lot of type of theories of what it could possibly be. Well, There's also Marie Antoinette's jewels. Yes. My right, favorite right. thing is they'll just make a statement and then directly after making a statement, it'll be like the voiceover like, oh yeah. my God, we found this pen. 
They found a pen at this part of the ocean? What could it mean? Could it be Searcher? Right? <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm mostly just thinking about Tremors now. Tremors <laughs> is fucking awesome. Uh, Remember that moment when the Tremor breaks through the wall and they like empty like four yes, different clips? Yes. And they, like, you broke into the wrong rec room, bud. Hell, I, just, I literally just watched it like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a good movie. Anyway. <laughs> what is that on Rotten Tomatoes? Oh, oh shit. We got I'm here. so ready to play a round of Rotten Tomatoes. This is the uh, game I play, Jason. What's it got on Rotten Tomatoes? I ha I, I did check it recently, oh, but it's it, no, it's blurry. It's All blurry. Right. So I'm, I'm going to guess... Uh, Make him hit this pen real I'm saying 70. <laughs> I, I, think, I think 80, 80 something. 70. You got to pick a number. 83. 83? 83. 78. 78? Uh, 69. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do the dick move and go with 84%. Ah, <laughs> oh, you bastard. Yeah, this is Price is Right. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, what about Tremors 2? <laughs> what about Tremors 2? That's the one where they burst out of the other Tremors. I right? think, uh, I don't know. And then there, yeah, remember. it is. I got to see the other ones. I've only seen the first. Okay, one. Tremors 2 is when the large graboids, as uh -huh. they're known in the series, start uh, becoming sick and like just beaching themselves on the land instead of usually moving underground like they do. And then they find one that has been completely like caved out. And then later they see that the babies are coming out of the mama. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, and they I need to see this now. They don't use motion like the previous trimmers. They They've use evolved heat detection. Oh, I kind of remember that. Yeah, and so <laughs> they do all kinds of different things to save themselves. But they're bipedal, so they run around. Anyway, check out trimmers. There's six of them. If you haven't seen them all, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> I will say that little piece of like evolution that happened is the exact reason why when people say what came first like the chicken or the egg i always say the egg because yeah. it was something that was not a chicken that then had a genetic mutation and then that egg hatches into the first chicken yeah that's, but, that's one of the good better answers i've heard like, yeah i can take yeah. it i'll take but, it i mean when do you define something as a chicken you know isn't that first freakazoid thing that had the egg oh we'll be here all night a chicken well, no, it was yeah. like the predecessor to a chicken. It had it evolved into what is considered a chicken. The fact of the matter is, is that you have eggs for breakfast <laughs> and chicken for dinner. Welcome back to toast. another episode of Eggs and hey, Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, any more theories on, Do you, I mean, A, do you think that the Knights Templar did make it to the New World before Columbus? Honestly, that when I watch the show, that is what I'm banking on. I'm just waiting for... Because they've pulled out like little pieces of parchment, so you know yeah. there's like books and shit down there. down there. Uh, yeah, I just that one. Obviously, I want that. I want. I'm invested in that one. I mean, <laughs> and like, would they? Do you think they would have the Ark of the Covenant, the Gold Menorah, the Holy Grail, maybe even buried down there in Canada? That would be pretty dope. That would definitely be crazy. Um, and there's only one way to find out. Right? <laughs> Tune into Oak Island and continue funding the exploration. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure mean, they spend way more money. Wait, how many? How many episodes and seasons deep are they? Oh man, this is like seven or eight. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, can see, I, guess, I guess I could see filling that like a little mini series. And they're not short episodes. <laughs> I mean, for other theories, any entity that we've ever mentioned that has another level of technology, lizard people could literally do this as like maybe they have some sophisticated drill that just drops stuff in the ground because they have to for whatever reason. I don't know. It's a relay for them on the inside of the planet or something. Or aliens. Right. I mean, and we only know that based off of the evidence that there has been activity from digging above to below. We don't know. For all we know, a lizard civilization could have sucked up that money from the bottom, and now we're just digging in. Into nothing. Into nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> could be mole people. Yeah. <laughs> it could always be mole people. <laughs> <laughs> that was the whole thing. A mole person came out, walked around, went back down into this <clears throat> hole. Some people saw, like, the depression and the thing was like... That's a money pit. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a money pit. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
before we wrap this up, uh, is there anything you would like to promote? Um, anything you want to let the yes. shout out? Yes. Once again, the movie I mentioned earlier, Bad CGI Sharks, which is a wacky, goofy, uh, meta shark buddy comedy. If you guys would like to check it out for free, it's on Tubi. Uh, it's an app, T-U-B-I, for free on there. There is commercials. It's also available for Amazon. I think we're up for rent or purchase on YouTube. Uh, but pretty much any online site of major retailers should have it, but Amazon will definitely have it for you. And uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Did you yeah, say yeah. something about like a global release too, or something like that? Uh, we we because we got listeners all. Do over. you guys? The past uh, the past week, we had this tweet by someone in Japan where we get a lot of attention online, and it went viral. Had like fifty seven thousand likes and twenty five thousand retweets. Way more than we've ever gotten on awesome. our little our little Twitter account. And then like I always uh, just to keep up on things and be active, I search. Bad CGI Sharks on Twitter in the past couple of days, Japanese tweets, Japanese tweets, Japanese tweets. So we're not out there yet, but there is interest. And one of the guys that did it was actually like, look, I hopefully this uh, this tweet and this article are showing there's interest if you want to show it to your distributor. So fingers crossed that you can see your boy Tristan in a shark movie in Japan. Yeah. yeah. If we're lucky. If so, we're yeah. Lucky. Nice. And I will say, like, if shark movies don't do it for you, his haircut in this movie oh. alone is something to be viewed. Yes, yes, yes. It is. I actually, we just had a review where two guys were like, no, no, the movie's really funny, but seriously, we fucking hate your hair. Cut it. We want to cut it. We want to take a fucking day. And I was like, oh, this is so the reaction I wanted. I fought for that guy. Right. That's right. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for this episode of High Mystery. Uh Park. It's a theory about stuff. It's the thing about islands. It's a thing that we do. Uh, I'm Robert. I'm Colin. I'm Tristan. I'm Ariana. And I'm Jason. Bye bye. New episodes every Monday. Want more High Mystery? Check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash High Mystery, for exclusive episodes every Friday. Merchandise can be found at our website at highmystery.com. Stay up to date by following us on Facebook and Instagram at High Mystery for fan art, news, and upcoming events. Thanks for listening.